Hi guys, welcome to tonight's episode of Doing Stuff with Herman, or whatever we're gonna call this. I actually don't have an official name for it yet. Uh, if you have a name, just put it down in the comments and I'll probably end up using it, even if it's just a one comment, because I don't have that many subscribers. But anyways, tonight we're gonna be covering Laragon, which is basically the solution to if you ever wanted to do Laravel development or PHP development on Windows, among other stuff that you wanna do on Windows sometimes, so it's not super straightforward. So before we dive in, let's actually talk about a couple different things that you can use to kind of set up a typical dev environment in Windows. So basically, historically we've had uh, SAMP and WAMP, which is basically just tools that basically install a virtual machine on your system and then you kind of run everything from there with the downside being that it's a virtual machine so it's kind of heavy so if you don't have like a really like a capable computer say you're working on like a, a tin and light or something uh, or you don't have enough RAM your system is probably going to slow down and your experience developing with those tools is not going to be the best right uh, ideally you want the best computer but financially that's not always a possibility for everybody then the newest option which is not the best but it checks off a lot of boxes is going to be using the linux windows subsystem uh, which is kind of a new tool which again it installs a lighter version of the of a windows um, virtual machine on your system uh, it doesn't feel that much like a virtual machine because you can actually cd into it with or still cd into the other like actually sorry not cd use your terminal with the other ones but it kind of gives you a more native experience right uh, but at the cost of adding extra complexity, so you're still at, like having to like learn how to use Linux, which is not a bad thing. You should learn how to use Linux. Uh, but if you don't want to, or you're just getting started, that's probably a hurdle. Or if you don't like having to set up your all your stuff, uh, then that can also be a thing. As well as you kind of run into issues where that little guy is running in its own instance. So to connect to it, you have to use uh, VS Code Remote, and then it kind of has a, it does a good job of kind of like exposing things to you, like via like if it's a remote machine and that those tools are pretty simple i have a tutorial i did a while back on vs code remote which is actually really really cool um but it adds that extra layer of complexity which if you just want to jump into a computer and work that's it kind of blocks you from doing that so come laragon which is cool cool because it kind of solves all those problems it's installs all the tools natively on your computer as well as it's super portable right so if you want to put this on a usb uh, you can do it and then you can take that USB from computer to computer with your projects and it will work. Granted, the only downside is it's a USB, so your transfer speed might cause a bottleneck, especially if you're moving a lot of files, such as in a large PHP project because you have those composer dependencies, or a large Node project, or as well as you can do Ruby and Python and other stuff in here as well. Uh, but by default, it's called Laragon, so it's basically geared towards Laravel, right? So. The website's called Laragon, laragon.org. Go there and it's actually download stuff. The docs are pretty self-explanatory. Uh, it tells you, it, it kind of gives you a, a, a rundown of all the features it includes. Uh, and then it also gives you a place to download. So let's actually go to the download so we can actually get hands on because we can actually dive into those features once we actually have this up and running, right? So I kind of cheated a little bit because I already have this installed in my system. There's three different versions you want. Uh, pick whichever one you want. They're all basically work the same. You can. If you pick the full one, uh, you'll get everything kind of out of the box installed. If you pick the lightest version, you'll get kind of like the core bit of it, but you can always install and add more stuff uh, and get it up to being like the full version. Even the full version can grow from there, right? Because we're not limited to just LAMP stack stuff here where you can also install, uh, we can also install Python, Ruby, all those other tools are become really weird to work with Windows or were historically really difficult to work with Windows. Uh, so again, I already have this installed. We'll kind of go ahead and Go through the install process just for the sake of it. Um, so wait just a second, guys. I actually have a weird setup here just because uh, I was trying to clean up my decrud my Windows machine and I made a mess. But anyways, I have this in downloads and we'll kind of walk through the whole thing, right? So we'll go ahead and install it. It'll kind of walk through your normal installs. Um, and we'll go ahead and select your language and I'll tell you, hey, when do you want to install this? Hey, I actually want to install this in my root directory. So when it comes to Lar Laragon, there should be two places, two directories you're going to care about, right? The main install place where you kind of have all the binaries and all the, all the tools that it comes with, and then your root project, root um, root directory, which is where your projects are actually going to go. Uh, by default, they're kind of being the same level, but you can separate them and move them around um, to your to wherever you would feel happy with them. In our case, we're going to go ahead and kind of keep the default settings just for the sake of simplicity here. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and pretend we're going to install this. You'll hit next and it'll go ahead and install. 
Uh, just keep hitting next, next, next. Actually, that's what the documentation says. Just install it, hit next, 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 which is pretty accurate for it. Uh, so once that's once that's installed, let me fix the setup. Once that once that's actually installed, we can actually go ahead and take a look at it. I actually have it running here, so it's going to be called Laragon. If I can. Cool. So it's actually going to once it's installed, it's actually going to look something like this. So within here, we're going to have a couple different things, mainly at the bottom, the main buttons that we care about, which can be start all, web, database, terminal, and then our root directory. That root directory being the one we talked about where your projects are actually going to live. So we're going to go ahead and start all. Uh, that's going to start Apache and MySQL. If I wanted more, I can actually go ahead and install, not install, it should, it should already come with it. I can actually activate more services. In our case, we're going to just start out for this, but we're going to go ahead and kind of cover more stuff before we dive into all our stuff. If that makes sense, I was kind of a circular sentence, right? Uh, but anyways, cool thing about this is we're gonna have a bunch of cool stuff out of the good stuff out of the box. I keep saying cool stuff out of the box. So cool stuff out of the box. In this case, we click our menu, but we're gonna look at this or quick app. So basically, this is gonna allow us to kind of like basically spin up any app we want or any template of an app we want rather quickly. So we have pretty much what you care about if you're doing PHP development. We have WordPress, Drupal, Laravel, and Symfony. Uh, you can extend this to others, and if you want to bring in something like Python, uh, and if there's like a way to like a Python recipe or formula, I'm not sure what they're called here. Uh, you can do use Flask or Django. You can bring those in, and they should work. Uh, and here we have the other a uh, quick summary of other tools that we have in here. Uh, obviously, we have Node because Node is kind of required to run everything nowadays. Uh, and you can install multiple versions of PHP, multiple versions of everything. You can kind of select which one you want to use. Uh, so in our case, let's actually spin up a quick uh, app, this Laravel app, because we love Laravel on this channel. So we're going to call this mm, My Laravel. Cool. So it might take a second to install. And while that actually installs, we can kind of cover other stuff. So we'll keep that guy in the background so we can actually see if it needs our attention or not. So uh, other thing we want to take a look at here is going to be our database. So this guy over here, if we click on it, it's going to give us a quick rundown of all the database uh, configs we have. Uh, obviously, you can set them via via like config files and stuff, but like UIs are nice sometimes, right? Uh, so basically, our database is running localhost, port 3000, user is root, and there's no password. Sweet, we have all that set up, right? Uh, then the terminal, it's kind of a terminal that's gonna run within that machine. Uh, this is commander by default, uh, and then you can use this to run stuff on your project. Uh, if you're, since we're going to be using VS Code, there's a downside here. We cannot use the VS Code integrated terminal. We actually have to go and use this terminal to run our RSM commands or, or install commands, uh, since this will actually have the paths to all the binaries and all the stuff that it needs and kind of be smart about it, right? So we're actually going to put this one off to the side and we're going to start covering our desktop with Windows XP developers. Anyways, other thing I talked about is this root folder where our projects are going to live. If we click on it, we already have a couple set ones right there where we have obviously our hello world, which I did earlier just to make sure everything's set up. Uh, and then now we have my layer, which is installing in the background. Uh, it takes a while. Uh, Composer is not the fastest thing in the world. It actually makes NPM look like a freaking race car, which makes me sad because NPM is not fast at all. So let's actually keep digging around this while this installs since we have some time. Uh, other things we can kind of take a look at here is uh, we can change the ports and stuff. We can change different configs here so we don't want Apache to be running there. Uh, if we want to switch to Nginx, if we want to start Redis, let's start Redis for the sake of it. Um, and it kind of gives us the host name, which we can kind of, the host name, which is going to be the free URLs, which we can change. So, save that. Cool. Um, do -do -do. And there's this sample ones, um, which we're not going to cover right now. So it's going to restart itself. I, oh yeah, I told it to run Redis, so it's going to actually run, run Redis now as well. Uh, well anyways, we are Laravel app installed. So now let's actually go into Google Chrome and go there. So we called our app, we called it uh, My Laravel app, right? So we call it My Laravel. Um, it should be test. So I do call this test the ending because it gives you free URLs. You can switch it, just don't switch it to something that's actually a thing, otherwise you won't be able to access those websites. I learned that the hard way ago when app was the default before dot app was a real thing. Um, so if we go back here, we can actually uh, open up VS Code. We're gonna go ahead and open up VS Code and actually look at our project. So this is the Hello World project I had open earlier, which we're not gonna pay attention to. We're gonna pretend it doesn't exist. And we're gonna go to my Laravel app. Cool. So basically anything that's here, uh, it's basically our app. We can work with it. There's no need to remote into it and there's no need to work with 
weird um, weird directory stuff as some other stuff might make you do. But actually one thing I want to talk about is actually setting this up properly because the first time you run this, uh, VS Code is actually going to scream, hey, we cannot find the PHP executable because uh, it needs the PHP executable to be able to run that Intel instance to give you those little code hints and details, right? So let's actually go to my settings, user settings, and we're going to go to extensions and we're going to go to PHP. And one thing we're going to look at here is uh, PHP validated executable path. So by default, I have this guy over here, which I'll show you how to get, but let's actually backtrack a second and pretend we don't have one and reload or stop, right? So we're going to do reload window, which reinitializes VS Code. So now if we open a PHP related thing, so let's open up uh, the API. Routes is going to scream at us. It's going to say, hey, cannot validate PHP because it's not, cannot validate the PHP executable, so we cannot give you IntelliSense. So if we start hovering over stuff, or IntelliSense is going to be broken. So if we want to go ahead and backtrack for a quick second, is we're going to go ahead and we need to go to Laragon, and we're going to have to find our executable path. The easiest way to do it is really just open up GUI, uh, go to where your binary is installed. So wherever the Laragon XC is, there should be a binary folder, and that's basically what we want. So we're going to go to PHP. Uh, go to the PHP folder, obviously, and try to dig down until we find php.exe. Cool, it's here. Now we actually need this path. This is going to need this guy right here. So we're going to go ahead and copy this address. I'll do copy as text, and we're going to go over here and go back to our settings. Uh, go back to the settings page, look for the option, and we're going to copy and paste that here. And if that's not all. We also have to make sure we tell it, hey, this is going to be in php.exe. Uh, we actually need the binary itself and then we have to do the weird thing with windows and backslashes which kind of like irritates everybody and it's the source of a lot of projects for you uh there we go now that that's installed it should actually not complain anymore so if we go here reload the window it's not gonna throw that error anymore and if i hover over something i'm gonna get some intelligence cool and you might this might not be the intelligence you get i actually have a separate package installed here which is called uh, intellifence uh, which is my favorite one. It is. It has a free version and a paid version. Uh, it's like 10 bucks. It's the best 10 bucks you'll probably spend for VS Code. Uh, but if you use the free version, you still get a lot of IntelliSense. Uh, that's my preferred one, and it gives you a lot over the default ones or the free one. Um, so yeah, it'll give you that. So one thing I want to do is, uh, what the, we want to do right now is actually show you how to run our async commands and actually make some changes here. So first, we'll check out without making that quick change. So we'll go to welcome.grid and yeah, I, I'm still missing some other stuff. So we'll call this uh, hello world from the Aragon. I just want to prove to you this is actually going to make a quick change. It's not going to be slow. It's not going to be weird about it. So yeah, quick changes work. Um, so you can make changes in all React almost instantly. Like, you still have to refresh the page. Um, and if you're running like uh, Vue.js or like React or Recompile, and it'll work the same way as well. Uh, which is pretty cool, pretty neat. Uh, one thing we actually want to go ahead here is connect to a database, right? So let's talk about connecting to a database with Laragon. So your database is running natively, so there's no need to kind of connect to a like, remote location or whatever. So the one thing to the one the way to get the connections to the connection settings is to go to database and open this guy up. And by default, you should have one called Laragon. You can make other ones here if you wanted to. Uh, we don't need to do that, so we're going to delete that. Yes. Uh, yeah, we don't need to do that. We have one. Uh, and then the tool we're going to be using for this is going to be uh, MySQL Workbench. Um, oof, the windows are getting really messy today. MySQL Workbench, cool. So I already have it here uh, from other attempts. So we're going to delete that. Sorry for the thing. Uh, we're going to go ahead and open this guy up. And then we're going to give it whatever name we want. And if you just go to the, just type in and Google MySQL Workbench, you'll be able to get the download for this. Uh, or local. Or, or path or or path director. Wow, I'm blanking out. Our host name is gonna be localhost, which is this address. We're just running on default port 3306. Our username is root, and we have no password, so we're this connection. It'll succeed. Cool. And sorry about the things. If you guys can hear them, I'll probably edit them out. So we're gonna connect to this guy, and we already have a couple different uh, different things right here. So by default, it made uh, when we actually created this, it created our database here. Uh, which is pretty cool because sometimes when you're working on a Laravel project, you have to stop and go and create a database and connect to it, otherwise it's going to blow up. Uh, but it did that for us already. So let's actually go back to our uh, VS Code instance and let's go to our EMV. 
and here we can actually make sure we have everything connected to it. If I remember correctly, this app's name is called Myleda. And yeah, that should be the settings to connect to it. So we're gonna run a default migration so we can actually see them, uh, see the effects of them in the database. So as I said, you can sadly, uh, you cannot run it, run the commands from here. Uh, so we cannot use the VS Code integrated terminal. So if you were gonna do that, what we're gonna need to do is pull some stuff out. Uh, let's clean some stuff. Just go in terminal here, and we're gonna actually need to go and CD into our project. So we're not in Hello World. So CD ls. Uh, we're actually in my variable, so we're gonna CD into my variable. Some things will open up to the right directory. It didn't for me because I was in a different directory. Things happen. Uh, we're gonna clear this out, and let's just test we actually have access to Tinker. Or sorry, it's not like testing out Tinker. Cool, it works. Let's just echo out something just for the sake of test. Testing, cool, it works. So that means I can actually go on PHP, artisan, migrate, and the micro migration is ran. So let's actually go check in the database, refresh here, and all our tables that we expect to be there are there. So yeah, that's kind of how you get the basic setup for a Laravel app in Windows. Uh, this can actually go alert a lot, lot further, uh, but I believe, I believe this is the easiest option to get started with. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I hope you guys liked the video. Uh, I'll work on if you like it, if you like it, like, hit the like button, comment, and subscribe. Uh, I guess I'm forced to say that by the YouTube algorithm if I ever want to uh, be famous, which is the goal. Uh, but yeah, so I'll see you guys in the next video.